work in the philosophy of science, particularly areas uh, related to biology and the sciences of the mind. Uh, and the thing I'm working on, the thing I'm working on at the moment, the thing I'm most interested in right now, is uh, looking at connections between a set of evolutionary questions and some some of the sort of really huge philosophical debates concerning uh, what minds are and what minds are for. So part of that is the question, uh, is, it, is it right as a first approximation, as a sort of first statement to think that minds, we have minds in order to represent the world and to make use of representations of the world in order to deal with it. There are huge camps on the yes side and the no side, often conducting this discussion in fairly abstract philosophical terms. And one angle on that that I think has been, it's been explored somewhat, but something I'm looking at now in some new ways, is uh, linking that question to the, ev the early evolution of the machinery that became the machinery of the mind. So early evolution of the neuron, neural networks, other control systems inside the heads of simple animals. So when you look at that, when you look at those evolutionary processes insofar as we understand anything about them, does it look right to say that what's happening there is the evolution of successively powerful representation generating and representation using devices? Or does it look better to say something totally different, uh, that what you're seeing is the evolution of control systems in animals who, whose function has nothing to do with representing or mirroring or picturing the world, but just has to do with uh, doing what has to be done in various circumstances? So I'm trying to connect uh, these rather large scale philosophical questions about uh, the place of the mind in nature to something concrete that we're learning about slowly uh, in the biological sciences. Part of what's at stake is just doing a better job with the giant philosophical questions and those do filter out and affect debates elsewhere. So debates about the nature of science itself are often debates, at least partly, about whether you should see the development of science as a process in which we get better and better representations of how the world really is. Now, typically, these are written representations rather than mental representations, but the notion of representation has a sort of similar role in both cases. Conclusions reached in this area tend to feed into all sorts of other discussions about the role of science within society, uh, the relationship between scientific and non-scientific approaches to medicine, uh, the role of science in the formation of policy and things like that. So my interest is fairly squarely in the, in the, the classic philosophical angle on this. You know, does it make any sense to think that uh, our minds are devices for representing the world? Or is that just a total mistake? Uh, or something in between, of course. It might be part right, part wrong. My interest is mostly in that, but from there, there's a lot of downstream. There are a lot of downstream consequences that uh, go via debate about the nature of science and the proper role of science within, within contemporary society. Some people discuss the alternatives in a way that I think involves a bit of a false dichotomy. So what people often say at this point is, you know, the point of having a mind is not to represent the world, the point of having a mind is to deal with the world. It's a tool for practical engagement with the world. Now, I think that's a false dichotomy because one way to deal with the world is to have a representation of it and use it. Uh, that sounds like a very basic point, but the, the, I think the issue is quite often mishandled. People say... Uh, so an example would be Richard Rorty in his very famous book, Philosophy in the Mirror of Nature. So Rorty said uh, that the great, one of the great mistakes of, over the philosophical tradition is to think that the mind is a mirror of nature. That's wrong because mirrors are these passive things that merely sit there and reflect, they merely picture and don't uh, do anything more active with respect to their relationships with the world. Now if that was a problem it would be easily fixed because a person would say um, look, the point of having a picture is to then use the picture to, to act. And sophisticated versions of the uh, representation-friendly view tend to have that character. But plenty of people think that's, that that doesn't work in some way, uh, that 
a thoroughly practical perspective on what minds do is a perspective that is pretty hostile to the notion of representation. 